So first things first, I'm sorry there hasn't been any content this week, but that's because, well, <laughs> um, first of all, there wasn't going to be a general election at all. Then all of a sudden, there was going to be a general election, then it got voted down. Then all of a sudden, there is now apparently going to be a general election. <coughs> um, I think we are literally waiting for the bill to pass through the House of Lords. But more or less, there is now going to be an election on the uh, 12th of December, making Friday the 13th probably the best day. <laughs> literally, a comedy writer couldn't have written that better. But nevertheless, on to, shall we say, today's um, topic, because um, I, shall we say, liked, well, <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm so deserving of this of this accolade, but Dan Jarvis, my MP, loves to send me letters from time to time updating um, us about him and his views and his opinions on Brexit. So I, I thought today that we will go through that, and um, yeah, here's the letter. Uh, we'll see what he has to say, and we'll, uh, we'll do some, shall we say, responding in real time. So, <coughs> I wanted to update you on the recent events in Parliament. Now, bear in mind, this letter's probably out of date, but I literally received it at the beginning of this week, so... <laughs> you know, as, as I've said, Brexit is a crazy roller coaster where nothing and everything and sometimes something can happen and then just be completely thrown off the rails the next time it happens so yeah that's brexit for you so i wanted to update you on the recent events in parliament so this was october the uh, 24th this letter was written by the way just to put a time stamp on it um as you previously raised a very important issue of brexit with me in 2017, I was elected on a manifesto commitment to respect the outcome of the referendum, prioritise jobs and living standards, and rule out a no-deal exit. Then you cannot respect the referendum. And as we've argued before on this channel, um, there is no point in, in respecting the referendum, because as we've said before, this idea of leave means leave... Well, what do you mean when you say leave? Oh, well, leave. No, no, no. What do you actually mean? You've got to define something. And that was the, the was Leave's, uh, you know, big tactic. It's big play. They went, we're going to basically shop every single option there is so that we don't necessarily have to commit to, to an option. Uh, when, you know, if we win and they weren't expecting to win. <coughs> which is very obvious from uh, the outcome. And even now, Theresa May was so reluctant to put a plan forward. Boris Johnson um, tried to put a plan forward, but again, it got rejected. It's been rejected continuously. And now we're back here with, once again, Boris Johnson's very, very hard Brexit, something that was not um, advocated for by the Leave side. And at the same time, promising multiple things to various people to a point where he promises the DUP that there will not be a regulatory divergence and on the same time saying that there will be a border in the Irish Sea. These two things just do not mix, mix fit together, you know, and that's not the only thing. There are several other things. Uh, we might go through that uh, at a later date, but needless to say, leave... Uh, leavers did not know or understand what they were voting for. But we've been through that before. So, following last week's EU Council meeting, the government uh, <coughs> presented a revised deal and a political de declaration outlining the terms on which we would exit the EU. To ratify the deal, Parliament would need to agree to the Withdrawal Agreement Bill, and I believe Parliament should have a chance to debate the bill is good which is why i voted for it at the second reading it would it was only uh it was only given a uh uh it was only oh hang on uh it was only by giving a bill a second reading that MPs can consider amendments on a wide range of options, including strengthening workers' rights, environmental protections, and legislating for a customs union to form the basis of a future relationship. Now, this is pretty standard. Um, 
now that it's gone to a second reading, MPs and whatnot can now start to put forward their own amendments. And a lot of people are not happy about this. This is why an election has been called. Because Johnson does not want people meddling with his withdrawal agreement. He does not want workers' rights being guaranteed. He doesn't want the um, NHS, for example, being put in a safe space away from Donald Trump's sweaty small hands. And as we know now, uh, the government has been holding secret talks about how private companies in the US can get their filthy mitts on the NHS. So when Boris Johnson and the Tories say that the NHS is safe, once again, it is a complete lie. They want to get rid of it. And this is what's unbelievable, is that so many leavers love the NHS, but don't understand that if you want Brexit, then you can't have the NHS. That is, it's that simple. And there's no ifs and or buts about it. Uh, also, the customs union. What's the point of us leaving then? If, if we're going to be in a customs union, okay, it forms a basis for a, a good trading relationship and equal trading standards. But then we have no power over how those rules and regulations are actually formed. So we've actually lost power. Ironically, the very thing the Brexiteers complained about. Us having, oh, we've got no power over these regulations. Well, guess what? <coughs> if we leave under, under that idea, then we will have no power. So once again, the Brexiteers are, you know, were shown that they were completely lying during the referendum and have been lying since, what, for the past... 40 years? No surprise there. So, however, the bill should also be given the scrutiny it deserves, uh, with MPs afforded the opportunity to amend it. Again, why we're going for a general election. Which is why I voted against the government's attempt to fast-track it through Parliament with minimal analysis. Three days is an extraordinarily short amount of time to debate a bill of this importance. By comparison, the Maastricht Treaty, a less politically uh, significant piece of legislation, was debated for 29 days. The Prime Minister committed himself to, to Britain leaving the EU on the arbitrary date of the 31st of October. <laughs> Which that is today. Um, so happy no Brexit day everyone. Um, I did not. The choices MPs make over the coming weeks and months will define our relationship with our European neighbours for years to come and they must not be rushed for the purposes of political expediency. We need to get this right. And the best way to keep that good relationship with our European neighbours and being part of the single biggest, most successful trading bloc on the planet is to remain inside it. And as has been said by Tony Blair and John Major, should we leave the European Union, we will be back sooner rather than later. As I said, I would rather Brexit not happen at all, but the good thing about Brexit, if it does happen, um, Euroscepticism will die. Because finally, this ideology, which Brexit always was, it was an ideological project that has never produced a single working uh, piece of legislation or, you know, a bill or actual physical idea, because... They know it can't work. As soon as they have to put pen to paper, that's when they have to start explaining stuff. And they don't like explaining stuff, these leading Brexiteers, because they know that it's bad and that people can analyse it and say, well, why should we do this? This is going to be bad for the country. So, <coughs> I will use the committee stage of the bill to improve it. There will be amendments that I w uh, will want to consider on workers' rights, environmental standards, consumer protections, and further measures to prevent a no deal, to ensure the best possible outcome for the people of Barnsley. Well, the best possible outcome for the people of Barnsley is remaining in the European Union. Uh, even the government's own uh, analysis, I'm surprised he doesn't actually talk about this, but there you go. Um, I would like to remind Dan Jarvis that all the governments impact assessments of this Brexit um, we haven't seen Boris Johnson's ones yet but all the ones that they've done previously have all shown that Brexit hurts Yorkshire 
and this entire area completely. It would absolutely be devastating. And you have to remember, as I always tell people, we are still suffering from the effects of the miners' strike. We are still suffering the effects of the 2008 financial crash. You know, people in this area, if they get an you know an unsurprising bill like the car breaks down or something like that, and they have to fork out 400 pounds, which may not sound like a lot, but to a lot of people in this area, that's quite a lot of money. That is more than a month's wages for a lot of people in this town. And all of a sudden, uh, they go bankrupt, they're in debt. You know, it, it, and you think that Nigel Farage, who wants a insurance-based healthcare system, do you think that the people in this area, and most people in the UK, could afford, you know, <coughs> like they have to pay out for stuff in the in the US? No. And it, quite frankly, will not stand. Um it's, it just will not stand. And you should know this, that in this election, if you vote Tory, then you are giving the Tories the ability to completely get rid of the NHS. That is their stated goal. They want to get rid of consumer rights, workers' rights, all gone. Everything that protects you, the people and working class of this country. The Tories do not care about you. <coughs> so... <coughs> so, at a time of political and constitutional crisis, the government should now bring forward an appropriate timetable for the bill and allow MPs to, a chance to examine uh, the detail and debate the, implica the implications of one of the most important pieces of legislation Parliament has ever considered. Um, obviously, this doesn't matter now because we're going to uh, an election. And as one... Um, very reputable um, pundit on this on the BBC said recently an election does not matter there is no evidence to suggest at all that the Tories gain a majority we will have another hung parliament in fact I am willing to put money on the fact that we have another hung parliament in fact one of the things he said was that he reckons that if you exclude uh, Labour and the Tories there will be a hundred extra, uh, not extra MPs, but a hundred MPs that are not from the two main parties. Namely, he says, from the Lib Dems and uh, Scottish Nationalist Party. My decisions this week will not be taken lightly, as with every important vote. I looked closely at every detail, took the advice and weighed up uh, the respective merits very carefully before deciding which way to vote. Uh, as I hope you know, I have taken exceptional and unprecedented steps to ensure our region is best placed to face, to face any of the challenges that Brexit might bring. How, how can you say that, um, Dan, knowing the government's impact assessments for this region? Uh, through my work as MP and Mayor of South Yorkshire, it is now a much stronger position to face our post-Brexit future. Yes, sorry, as Mayor of South Yorkshire, Dan Jarvis has, has no actual powers. So he hasn't actually improved the area at all. Um, again, you'd think, and I, if Dan Jarvis ever sees this, then I would like to know um, how we are in a, quote, much stronger position. But there you go. Um, as we prepare for the future and life beyond the Brexit debate, our priority must be to build a collaborative, sustainable and inclusive economy here in Barnsley and South Yorkshire, where everyone shares and benefits. Whatever happens in the coming weeks and months, uh, this is what I'll be working towards. My very best wishes, Dan Jarvis. Best way to do that, Dan, is to remain in the European Union. Britain's troubles were never, ever caused by the EU. Leaving the EU will only exasperate the problems because they were our problems. They were the UK's problems. Take, for example, zero-hour contracts. A current plague on the people of Barnsley. The Conservatives have continuously said at every single uh, last three elections that they would do something about zero-hour contracts. They have not done this once. 
They have not presented any legislation. They have not presented any potential bills. They've not even presented any potential ideas. They've just said, we'll do something about it. So their inaction uh, in this point can be taken as an action to show that they really, they want zero hour contracts. They want companies to be able to exploit people on these really damaging contracts. You go to people in Barnsley who are, quote, full-time employed under a zero-hour contract because that's how they're classed. And, you know, how many hours of work have you done this week? Two. And that is how manipulative, da dangerous, and completely against everything that Dan Jarvis has just said here about making things better for Barnsley and making things better for South Yorkshire. But, like I say, I will vote Labour. Um... So I believe it, but put it this way, the first chance that we get to go get rid of Dan Jarvis, I will absolutely argue that Dan Jarvis has done nothing for this uh, constituency.